supporting General Haftar and himself. Right then, so a little slow on progress on the power supply front for the tattoo machine. Now, I had mm, tripod in the way there. It's really hard trying to work around the tripod, they're just in the way. So, hence the sideways view. But anyway, so power supply I've been working on. I'd been using Arduino to just familiarize myself with some of the chips I'm going to use. And I was actually writing the program for a PIC, a PIC 16F690. Now, I had every individual program working fine. I'd wrote the codes to learn the I basically decode the R remote and actually learn its stored values in the EEPROM. I wrote the LCD drivers, I wrote the, uh, I had to manually write the I2C driver because the 16F690 doesn't have a master module on it, so I was having to do that all manually with code. And it was all working, and literally, I was just compiling them all together onto the same page, well, the same project, and I was just getting nonsense out of the LCD. I could not get it to display anything, and I just give up in the end. I had about a whole afternoon going through the code, and it's not hard. I mean, you look, uh, if you ever watch a bloke called the 8-bit guy, he, he shows you, you can get an LCD display, and just with some buttons and some wires, you can get it to display things. It's really not difficult to write the code for them. I tried a different slot, I just get absolute nonsense out of it, and then I tried, and here's where it got really weird, I, I loaded up a program that I'd originally, the project I originally wrote the LCD display in and tried driving it, and was still getting nonsense. Now, it's most likely I had wired something up wrong on that LCD, but as it is when you go, you've got problems and you go over and you go over and you just cannot find, so in the end, it was like an 11th hour change, I just went sod it, I'm going to get all the bits of code where I try to learn the chips and write and read from the chips in the Arduino and just pile it all into the same page, move it about a bit and do it. And that is now up and working just fine. So I'm now finally, I was hoping to get this done today because I'm actually off round there tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. There's no point rushing it. So I'm just plodding on this evening. It's getting a bit late. I've just been working on the power supply. So that's what this video is. So anyway, the power supply is going to connect via uh, this umbilical. Now, on the bench in front of me here, the actually it's a husband of the person I'm building this for. He, I don't, I don't know whether he brought it and it got damaged in the post or whether he damaged. I don't, I don't know or whether he got it off friend. I don't know. But it was an Aventone powered little mix cube, like a little portable like mix cube thing. Anyway, the power supply was way too much for the tattoo machine. It had this beast of a transformer in it, dual 30 volt secondary, uh, way too much. I'd just been burning power in heat sinks. A lot of the current rating of this transformer, because its voltage is so high, isn't actually that great. So if the power supply is trying to draw a couple of amps, it would have been working this transformer hard. So I've got in here, I've ripped this transformer out and I've put in this nice little toroidal one. So I've just basically a bit of mains wiring, I've got the earth. Uh, this transformer is actually a double insulated type transformer. It doesn't need earthing. It, it can run without an earth. Uh, and there's no direct connection from the mains to the power supply. So technically that can do without an earth, but just to stop floating voltages and noise pickup and stuff, I actually have the earth wire. It's just connecting in one of these wires here. And basically it's just going to come out so it, where i've rectified it in the power supply end of it the negative rail will just connect to it if it's just for noise suppression or anything else it doesn't doesn't really need it for safety there's nothing theoretically i mean it's double it's it's like class two what well, i can't remember it's basically but there's a safety stand which says if you meet it you don't need an earth um uh, you know this is all plastic it's, there's no safety hazard here at all but I've, I feel like I'm running earth just for noise suppression so anyway yeah that was just a quick update so far just a little repurposing of this so I like this as well because it means the power supply itself isn't in the unit weighing it down uh, I don't have mains wiring you know, you've got big chunky mains wiring up to it. it's just a nice long this cable's like quite long it's, it's probably a good sort of two meters three meters long i'd say maybe three meters somewhere around there 
so yeah anyway that's it so far so I've got the power supply done so I think what I'm going to do next is drill out the case to take the this connector now I did originally want to use the one that was on the Aventone but it was had this big circuit board on the back it was absolutely inch thick in this goop I could not pull the goop off I tried burning it off and I just end up with this mess I don't know if that's focused in on it or not but probably not but yeah I've just got this mess of a connector so I've got this off a project I built a bit back that I pulled it off so that's the connector that's going to go on the power supply and that's the actual lead that's going to plug into it so yeah anyway I know admittedly you technically shouldn't have the pronged end being the end that has is live but seeing as it's only got nine volts ac on it from an isolated supply it really doesn't matter it's yeah, yeah it's fine so yeah anyway that's where i am so far so i'm gonna have a cuppa and continue and hopefully i uh, get a little bit more done this evening <coughs> right so a little bit more done on the board for this now it's been a few days since I started this video. The next day, the Saturday, <clears throat> I was hoping to crack on with this and get a bit more done and my pollen allergy just went nuts. Uh, I had about three hours in here. Uh, you know, I mean, I try and pick up the soldering iron and I couldn't even get a joint soldered. I'd, I'd, by the time I'd blow my nose, it's, uh, it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you'd sort of pick up the iron by the time I had the wire in this hand to solder in and the solder on here it, it, I was sneezing again and it just it was shite so what I've got so far is let me drop this down a little bit so here's the board at present I've got the this is the output relay so this clicks on and off for the output this is the relay selects between the two different outputs <clears throat> the driver transistors this is part of the amplifier which is going to take the output of the little digital to analog converter channel and driver transistor which is going to be mounted on the back of the case i'll show you that in a bit uh, this battery backup in retrospect I, I mean i've just got i brought like ended up with a massive case of zinc chloride batteries now zinc chloride aren't particularly high capacity batteries but in very low drain applications they last a very long time and they generally don't leak like alkalines do i've seen them that are like 10 15 years out of date and they're fine and still working alkalines self-discharge zinc chlorides don't um you know there's a bloke on like youtube and he's got like ever ready batteries that are 30 years out of date and they're still working not leaking so other things i've hooked up if you look here the display on my dvm is currently showing the temperature it's slightly over reading start off when i thought i had a massive issue with the let me lift you back up again a moment there's an LM35DZ at the end of this piece of wire, which is this thing just here. You know what that is? It's a precision temperature sensor. The output on it, voltage output on it, rises by 10 millivolts for every degree centigrade. So I've got an operational amplifier just here, which is multiplying that by 10 because the ADC on this is only 8 bits, so it makes the resolution obviously 10 times greater. But when I was first firing it up, I was getting like 24, 25, um, well, showing like 2.4, 2.5 volts on here, which would have been like 24, 25 degrees. Um, but after letting it run for like five minutes, it's settled down. So I'm guessing it just like must self heat a bit or needs to just stabilize. It's probably got like some firmly bonded components inside it or something that just need to reach equilibrium. So the basic cheapo Fermista based thermometer in the room here reckons it's 19.7 so i'm more inclined to believe the output on this saying it's 21 point something we'll give it some error margin i'm going to say it's it might be reading a little high that might be reading a little low but i think what i might just do is probably take one degree off of it or something in the programming uh i shall see but what i can do if i get something that's cold like this 
circuit board cleaning spray and just give the LM35 a tickle. See how the voltage plummets. So that's now at 13 degrees. If I just give it another little tickle. So yeah, and I'll give it a final one. Come on. This stuff will actually freeze if you get enough of it on there. So yeah. So what I can do now if I put the soldering iron near it, it should um, come on, warm up. Or was it still evaporating off the last of the? So yeah, twelve. So yeah, that's basically the temperature sensor working. So that's going to keep heating for a while. Other things I've got, if I can find a piece of wire with two ends stripped on it, let me just strip the end off this piece of wire here. That's what I'll do. So the resistors here, let's come back down. Lovely camera, William. Lovely. Absolutely fantastic. Just like a professional. Of course, it's not trying to focus in on that dodgy wire at all, is it? So, if I put one of these resistors on here and find plus 5 volts, which is on here, you should hear that's one relay clicking and that's the other one. And that's only even at 9 volts they're pulling in. So, there you are. Look, it's stabilizing just about to hit 20 degrees so yeah that's where i've come so far now <laughs> i might end up having to chuck this board in the bin because i made a very very annoying mistake in that when i was wiring up the adc module instead of taking the ground terminal to ground i had the plus five connected to the output from the uh, 7805 regulator which is back there and annoyingly I accidentally connected the ground terminal up to the plus so it was four volts it pulled everything up the this got like seven point something volts I, I don't know see if it works or not oh yeah, I forgot to say yeah anyway um, I was on about these batteries when I so I should have really just put a couple of small super caps on there and used the trickle charge function on there but I, like I said I got a box of batteries so I just figured I was going to put this battery back up on here uh, I don't know, it used up circuit board space I could have done with really. The underside of this isn't exactly the neatest of how I like it. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's it so far. So the next thing I'm going to do, now I have the whole board wired up, is actually hook it up to the Arduino and see if these modules are still actually working or if they're all toast. If they're toast, I'm just going to chuck this whole bloody board away and start again. So we shall see. Right, so a little bit more done on the power supply. So let's just move this a bit, shall we? So yeah, I've done some chassis work. So I've mounted the heat sink. So I've, you can see I drilled, if it focuses in some holes drilled and tapped just M3 holes, two of these screws hold the heat sink on and these holes have been cut in the polycarbonate case for the bridge rectifier and the output transistor, pass transistor for the power supply. So a bit more done on the board. It's a bit of a rat's nest. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to call this one the prototype. I'm going to give it to the end user to use, <clears throat> but I'm going to revisit this at some point when it's finished. Uh, well, obviously after it's finished and, you know, sort of do a better job of building it. But at present, it's kind of up and running. So done some testing. The op amp here is say a gain of 11. It's amplifying the signal from the LM35. It's pretty accurate. The slight mishap I had with connecting the ground terminal of this to the plus voltage it hasn't hurt it wasn't 
it wasn't like I'd connected ground to plus volts and plus volts to ground. What I had done is connected the plus five volt supply to the five volt from the regulator, but I then connected ground to the unregulated, which at the time was just off a half flat nine volt battery. So what happened is because the output on the regulator rose above five volts, the regulator stopped passing current. So the only return to um, the lower voltage supply was via these two chips, the LM35 and the DS1302. So they both got, what happened, either there's a diode in here or something, but whatever happened, this then passed a small amount of current which brought the rail supply right up. These two devices draw a few hundred nanoamps between them. And because the current draw was so low, it's not, it's not damaged this. This is working just fine. So what I probably should have changed is, I put this battery holder on here just because I've got a whole box of um, zinc chloride batteries. Um, they're, they're great in low drain applications. I mean, this is only ever going to come into play if there's a power cut. And I measured the DS1302 at about 100 and it was like 190 nano amperes of current when it's running off the batteries. So zinc chloride, they just, they last and last. They don't self discharge. They don't really leak. They can be like, you can see some that are 30 years out of date and they're still working and not leaking. So yeah, that's where I am so far with it. Uh, it's not the best underneath, as you can see. Like I said, I'm going to call this one a prototype and do it better second time around. I'm going to get make a proper board up for it, get rid of these modules and actually have chips straight into sockets on the board. This board could probably be a fraction of the size. I get rid of this because the DS1302 chip actually has, <clears throat> when you're programming it, come on, focus, focus. Yeah, yeah, awesome camera, don't focus. Yeah, uh, when you're programming the chip, what are you trying to focus in on? Kind of focused, I guess. When you're programming that chip, there is a trickle charge register so you can connect some diodes up actually internally in the chip and then some series resistors. So I've got some 2.7 volt, like they're like quite large farad capacitors and just a couple of them in series will do because the chances of their power cut being any more than even an hour or so in this day and age is slim and those super caps would run the clock for quite some time. Uh, and you know, so yeah, it's, um, so today's task is I've got to put a few more wires on this board for the data lines for this chip. And I've actually got to wire up the AC input to the bridge rectifier, the output from here and wire everything up to this board, which is what the Arduino plugs into. So that's it for now. Um, just got to figure out whether I'm going to put this all as one video or split it up into several ones. I shall see. But as always, Time to crack on and get a little bit more done. Right then, so it is working. I was up till quite late last night. Uh, finishing it off, but yeah. So if I bring my multimeter into shot, you see if I the remote control here, if I press one, it gets close. Remember, it's only an eight bit resolution on the uh, digital to analog converter. So, you know, yeah, you know, you, you, you approximate, you get it, you're either under or over. Some of them are quite close. So yeah, I can go up and down in, again, because it's 8-bit, it's a weird resolution. So 0.12 volt scale. Uh, let's go back to 5. So yeah. Close enough, or I can nip it up by a half volt if I wish to as well. Again, if you start going up the half volts, it goes quite out because every half volt takes the ADC up by eight, where it's actually needed to be like 17 point something to a volt. So it does go out. But yeah, the, uh, I don't know if you'll hear it on the camera, if I change the outputs, there's a little relay click. Uh, that's changes over between the two outputs and there's a second relay. That uh, actually allows the output out through the 
yeah, yeah, it's the main on off basically. Switch doesn't carry any current anymore. The old one, obviously, the switch was just part of a loop. It went through the switch, through the machine, and back to the power supply. The switch doesn't even directly power the relay. It sends a signal to the Arduino. The Arduino powers the relay. You can see, it, if you'll see it in this light, but there is an LED goes on and off on the Arduino board when it senses the input. Oh uh, yeah, power supply is a bit current limited because it's only a 25 VA uh, 9 volt AC transformer so uh, it'll happily supply an amp up to like full voltage max voltage is 11.7 volts it gives me some headroom but if you start trying to draw heavy current if I heavy current if you start trying to draw heavy current uh, about two and a half amps all you're going to get out of the thing is just over six volts however hang on a minute hay fever day that's constant load obviously tattoo machines are an intermittent load it's a quick pulse and then it's all spring down spring up so the capacitor there and capacitor there have time to recharge between pulses so i seem to think the ever supply i built had pretty much the same current output on it i think it would do a little bit more but um to be honest, it's barely used above six volts. I think it's only on the old machine or two it gets turned up. Uh, anyway, like I said, I'm technically calling this one a prototype. So if it needs some alterations for the proper one, Mark II, I can include them. So you can see the battery backup on the real time clock works. If I pull the power out and I put it back in, I look, LCD initiates and boom. Temperature gauge is being a bit odd. It's doing some weird self-heating thing. I should just be able to basically divide the output of the analog digital converter by about 5.6 and get a pretty accurate temperature. However, I'm having to deduct four degrees off the final figure. So it starts off correct and it rises by about four degrees rapidly. So I think there's some self-heating of the chip going on. It probably wants to be on a bigger heat sink, but it's correct now and last night it was like nearly 22 degrees in here and uh, it was correct so i mean it's only on there just because you know i wanted something to just fill out the screen a bit more but no it it, it works to some extent so yeah it can stay but uh, yeah anyway that's it for now prototype finished i'm off around there to go take it to its end user and uh, as always thanks for watching and catch you next time